We're Ray and Amy Kim, and we lead the ministry in San Francisco, and we're excited about today's talk as we're going to be talking about building a spiritual marriage. And this is not something I feel like Amy and I have arrived at. Uh, not at we're, all. <laughs> we're a constant work in progress. Um, but a spiritual marriage is an honest and growing one. It's inspiring and helping each other grow in our faith, uh, in our strength in God. It's um, growing in our awareness of our need for God. Uh, and also building on the truth that God shows in the Bible, also that together we can make a great impact in changing lives. Uh, we're going to begin with Ephesians chapter 4, because this one really gets to us. Ephesians 4, verse 15, it says, Love should always make us tell the truth. Then we will grow in every way and be more like Christ, the head of the body. Christ holds it together and makes all of his parts work perfectly as it grows and becomes strong because of love. Love. You know, love should always make us tell the truth. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I don't always like to do. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and what we're learning is that a spiritual marriage is not a perfect one, mm -hmm. but it's a growing one because it's built on love and truth. As soon as I don't want to be honest, uh, definitely there's a lot of times I don't want to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah, you don't want to be honest <laughs> for sure. No. That means I'm actually not really interested in building a spiritual marriage, but I'm settling for a very shallow and superficial one. Um, not one that's deep. Definitely not one that's vulnerable. Uh, and definitely that not one that's going to actually where God's going to work through us to actually change people's lives and, and really inspire other people, you know. Well, I know for me, it was really hard, especially when we first got married, uh, to speak the truth because I was just so insecure. I was really right. afraid to be rejected. I'm always worried about what you think, how you feel. What if I speak the truth? Are you going to be mad or or you could still love me? You know, I always love you. Oh, I'm not <laughs> sure about that. But uh, Yes, you do love me. and um, But it taught me a lot to just grow in my confidence in God and learning to actually tell God first yeah. about my, where my heart was at, my fear. Then I can have the faith actually to speak the truth. And now I think I speak more truth. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you do. And, but it come out more in anger and uh, self-righteousness, but definitely not the love. So I definitely work on the love part. <laughs> yeah. So one of the things that I think you and I talked about is what undermines us from building this kind of spiritual marriage where we're internally strong and constantly aware of our need and a reliance on God, uh, it comes out to fear in two forms. The fear of conflict, mm -hmm. which yes. is a lot of avoidance. Yes, that's definitely um, me. <laughs> and then the fear of vulnerability, yeah. which is just sheer pride, where I just don't want to admit, face, or see any of my weaknesses or my uh, need emotionally. You know, so how about you share more, more about the fear of conflict? Well, I definitely doesn't like conflicts. I like it to be all comfortable. You know, I like it to be calm, but it doesn't work that way in life. And uh, I think when it comes to conflict, it makes me uh, get afraid. Mm -hmm. It makes me feel stressed, you know, and I think a lot of time I'm just afraid of your reaction. What's wrong with my reaction? Well, you can get mad <laughs> for sure, or you can just get prideful and you just argue with me, or you can just don't want to forgive. But then the, the, the scare, more scary part, then you tell me something truth. Yeah. And I just don't want to hear. So then I rather settle for a superficial marriage and not deal with the big elephant that's in our living room. Right. And uh, to build a stronger marriage with truth. Uh, I like this scripture in Jeremiah 8. They should bondage the wounds my people have suffered, but they treat their wounds like small scratches. They say it's all right. Everything is all right, but it is not all right. You know, wow. this scripture definitely describes our marriage at the time, yeah. especially when people ask, you know, how's your marriage, right? And then we were like, oh, it's fine, it's all right. <laughs> you know, it's not all right. And I think we remember many times yeah. <clears throat> people ask, and then you say, I think we're doing great. And then I just start crying <laughs> like, what uh, because here? there was just a lot going on in our heart. You know, there's a lot of small scratches that we refuse to deal with yeah. in our marriage. Right. I, th I think about small scratches like our fear and our anxiety yeah. that when we don't deal with it, it leads to anger and detachment. Mm -hmm. uh, small, small scratches of our guilt and our sin that will lead to pride and distance mm -hmm. or small scratches of disappointment that lead to bitterness and deceit. I know it's easy for me to just suppress my anger, yeah. bitterness, or even just keep a long list, a record of drama. I don't wrong. like that long list. <laughs> and then until I can't hold on it anymore, then it all come out. Right. And it take faith to really hold on scripture, to be honest, and to see how darkness has a foothold in my life when right. I suppress the truth. Right. Uh, I found this quote, you know, uh, when me and Kato was watching The Ring of Power, it say, evil does not sleep, it waits. 
until the moment of our complacency, it blinds us. Yeah. You know, I don't always really see how I'm blinded by my own fear, my anxiety, and how it affects you. Right, but right. I see yours. You see mine clearly. Very clearly, <laughs> and I have a lot of feelings and thoughts about that. But even I remember the other day, you know, you lost your credit card, right? Yeah. And then you were trying to call the credit card agency, Can't right? Cancel that thing, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, "Do you do this? Do you do that? Do you ask this question? Do you ask that question?" And you're like, "I think, I think I know how to cancel a credit card. I've been at this for a little bit." <laughs> yeah, I think I can get really in my anxiety and fear. I get self righteous, yeah. and I don't trust you instead of just. Uh, being honest that I'm just afraid or I'm just anxious, you right. know. I think it's easy for me to be self-righteous, minimize or justify my own fear, anxiety and blind by my anger and just get mad at yours and thinking you're the problem and I'm not. Uh, but instead, I'm really going to God and really praying for my heart so I can speak the truth enough yeah. instead of just being silent, detached and distanced. Right. And I think part of it too, it's um, one of the things I don't like to take responsibility for is even when you're that anxious or uh, fearful, that's also part of uh, my responsibility because we're in this together. Mm -hmm. And in a spiritual marriage, uh, what I don't like about the effort it takes to build a spiritual marriage is it's that we're always in it together. Mm -hmm. It'd be so much more easier and convenient to say, oh, that's your issue. That's your problem. Yes, I would when, love that. <laughs> when it's really, no, we're, we're, in this, we're in this ride together. We're, yes. on, we're on this roller coaster together. Uh, one of the biggest fears that undermines um, me from building a spiritual marriage is my fear of vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And I think most husbands, vulnerability is not your word of the day. It's not the first go-to. When we wake up, I'm like, I can't wait to be vulnerable with everybody. Like That's like the last thing. It's almost like a curse word to, mm -hmm. to us as hus a lot of husbands and men. But the fear of vulnerability for me is just sheer pride. Uh, 2 Corinthians 6.11 speaks about this. My friends at Corinth, our hearts are wide open to you. And we speak freely, holding nothing back from you. If there is a block in our relationship, it is not with us, for we carry you in our hearts with great love, yet you still withhold your affection from us. So I speak to you as our children. Make room in your hearts for us, as we have done for you. You know, Paul explains in the scripture that vulnerability, opening wide our hearts, it really is a choice. Mm -hmm. It's not just an emotion. It's not just, well, you know, when it's convenient. It really is a deliberate choice. And a spiritual marriage and family has no blocks in our relationship, meaning that we don't hold it, we, we can't hold anything back, and we speak freely and transparently. Because at the end of the day, rather than me protecting my pride or protecting my ego, I'm more interested in wanting to be close to you and close to God. But that's a choice that we have to make, right? Mm -hmm. That's a choice I've got to make. Yep. A lot of times I resist and fear vulnerability because when I'm vulnerable, yeah. that actually yes. means that I have uh -huh. to face my weakness. Yes. I have to feel my, my, my need for God and my need for you. Mm -hmm. uh, realize I can't do it. Yes. Uh, that I'm just so limited. And I don't like to live in that space. And yet that's the spiritual space of seeing, again, my awareness of my need for God and my need for love. And what I figured out over the, this pandemic and even recent months when we've been talking is that my anxiety and stress only increases when my vulnerability decreases. So what I found is that the times when I'm most anxious or stressed out, the spiritual solution is vulnerability. Yes. And <laughs> I know yeah. you love that. Uh -huh. Yes, totally love um, it. And it's not, uh, it's not circumstances, not people and, and other people's problems or, or they're their fault. It's because I'm refusing to make that choice to be vulnerable. And I think the biggest place this begins for me in our marriage, it starts with God. Mm -hmm. Learning how to be open and vulnerable with God about uh, my fears, my uh, needs, uh, the limits, the frustrations, the walls I keep hitting because I'm trying to do this mm -hmm. without God or without your help. Yeah. Uh, I didn't want to be vulnerable with you the other day of just how angry I got because you were inconsiderate. <laughs> and, and the real issue was you weren't the issue. The issue was I feel so humbled uh, and so challenged in learning how to parent our son who has special needs or our daughter who's, you know, just started college. And yes. I, I feel clueless a lot yeah. of times of, okay, am, do, how do we parent at this stage in life? Or uh, how do I engage? How do I, how do I be e easygoing or listen? So those moments of uncertainty, rather than talking to God about it, I just kind of hunker down and harden. And then that's when the anxiety and stress increases. And that's where I really need your help. And I, most of all, I just need God. Yes. So one of the things that, I think we've also figured out after talking about this is that 
honesty is what really at the core of building a spiritual marriage, honesty with God mm-hmm. uh, and honesty with each other yes. and, and honesty with friends. Mm-hmm. So as we wrap up this conversation, there are two kinds of conversations that Amy and I are learning to continue to have right now with God in prayer uh, and also with each other throughout the day and throughout the week. And these are two honest conversations that are key to building a spiritual marriage, at least what, what we're learning. First Corinthians 13, verse 6 says, Love joyfully celebrates honesty and finds no delight in what is wrong. Love is a safe place of shelter, for it never stops believing the best for others. Love never takes failure as defeat, for it never gives up. The spiritual marriage never gives up on God and never gives up on each other. Yes. Because we're constantly learning how to go to God honestly, vulnerably, Mm -hmm. to have these kind of conversations. So the two conversations that we want to encourage you to have today and that Amy and I are working on is a a conversation of relational honesty and a conversation of emotional honesty. And relational honesty is when we're revealing what we really think and feel about our relationship, whether it's with our spouse, mm-hmm. uh, how we feel about the distance, any is there any guilt we're carrying, mm-hmm. uh, the sins we feel ashamed of bringing up that if we just bring up, we'd actually find our, ourselves getting encouragement and freedom from. Um, and where no area of our life should be kept secret, specifically involving our relationship. It's, we should be talking about, man, do I feel close to God or distant yeah. from God? Mm-hmm. You know, do I Am I motivated to, per, to be close to you? Or do I want to avoid you? These are relationally honest conversations about how do I feel like our relationship is going? And then the second conversation is one of emotional honesty. This is not just about the relationship. This is more about our own hearts. Revealing our emotions, both positive and negative. It starts with being honest with God in prayer. A lot of times, Amy and I can't have good conversations with each other because yeah. we haven't really talked to God. Yeah, definitely and let talk to God, God to help us, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and when I'm praying to God, it starts getting me deeper. It helps me start getting more in touch with, oh, there are some other emotions going on about or some of the motives that are driving these emotions that I haven't been in touch with. But praying, it helps me get in touch with. So this is about revealing the seed of our emotions, which is the heart. It's revealing our motives, what desires and pursuits undermine our, our desire for God and our desire to be close to our spouse. These two conversations of relational honesty and emotional honesty will get us started on the path of building a spiritual marriage. So thanks for joining us on this Let's Talk. Uh, looking forward to having great conversations tonight and we'll see you next time. <laughs>